Now, a few years ago, I found an island in a remote section of rainforest here on the east coast of Australia. It's surrounded by a river that's hundreds of millions of years old. And what I found was living on this island was some of the most venomous snakes in the world and lots of them. I'm currently attempting to survive here for three days living off the land with these deadly animals. In part one, we were able to track down some highly venomous and rare species within the first 24 hours. It's day two at the moment and we've got some pretty wild things planned for this episode. Let's get into it. In last week's episode, we found so many cool, highly venomous and deadly creatures while I was staying out here on this island. Woke up this morning and the plan for today is to try and find one that's even deadlier. A species that's only been officially reported a handful of times over the last 15 years here in this area on the Sunshine Coast. And it also happens to be one of the most venomous snakes in the world and the fastest striking snake in the world. But yeah, if you haven't guessed it already, we're looking for the death adder. In a place like this, big rocky escarpments, lots of leaf litter, big jungle, no one ever comes out here, so I can guarantee that there would be death adders around this area. How do you find this snake that has evolved so well to blend in with its surroundings? So yeah, main target is a death adder, but there's so many other deadly species of snakes that live here on this island that we're hopefully gonna track down in this video. Let's get into it, start walking around, and see what animals we can find. So I was just walking up this creek right here, and take a look at what I found just sitting in the corner of this rock. That right there is a big venomous huntsman spider. And I think we're gonna try to pick it up. Now the thing is, they're completely harmless. They are venomous, but I don't know why this terrifies me more than any other animal that I could find over here on this island. I guess they do look pretty creepy. All right. All right, we just got her off the wall onto this little leaf right here. Take a look at that. That is a crazy looking animal. Now, there is so many deadly species on this island, as you've seen over the past 24 hours already. And this guy isn't one of them. Actually, I reckon this might even be a big female spider. But yeah, take a look at the little girl. I know I'm shaking like a leaf here, <laughs> but Absolutely gorgeous spider. Now these spiders have eight legs, eight eyes as well. They'll find places in our houses here in Australia and they'll sit up next to lights, waiting for little bugs or even the geckos eating the bugs to come past and then they'll envenomate them and eat them. And that's a terrifying death if you're a little gecko. Maybe I was a gecko in a past life or something and got killed by one of these spiders because they absolutely terrify me. We'll try to get her to crawl on my face or something, just for one shot. So that is a big huntsman crawling across somewhere right now. I think he's on my back somewhere. Oh yeah, I can feel him crawling down my arm. They look terrifying, but they're actually harmless. And that was a pretty cool spider. All right, she just jumped off. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's keep looking and see what else we can find. We're just heading to the other side of the island, going to these rocky escarpments that I found last time. Should be some brown tree snakes up in there, maybe some adders. Now, what is the most venomous snake on this island? Or what's the deadliest snake on this island? And it's actually also the deadliest snake in Australia that lives here, the Eastern Brown Snake. I'd take a death adder any day over getting bitten by one of them out here. Really potent venom. And yeah, they're the second most venomous snake in the world and responsible for the most deaths over here in Australia. If you don't get to the hospital in time and treat the bite correctly, you can die from these species. All right, just down in front of us here, is another species to tick off on this island. 
Now this right here, this species of frog is actually called the green tree frog. Probably my favorite species of frog here in Australia. So cool, I'm glad that we got to show you one in this video. Now believe it or not, these are actually gnarly species of frog because there's photographs on the internet of this guy right here eating the second most venomous snake in the world, which also lives over here on this island, the eastern brown snake. And yeah, they'll eat lizards, small mice, lots of bugs and different species. But yeah, pretty crazy that they've been seen eating highly venomous snakes over here in Australia. But it also goes the other way around, that big brown tree snake, any of the carpet pythons, any decent sized snake will also eat these green tree frogs. And although he is under this canopy, he is out here on the open. So he has to be careful of birds of prey as well. They'll often come out at night and you'll see them on the roads. And that's when the owls will come out, the tawny frog mouths, which also prey on this species of frog right here. But he's a pretty cool little fella. I think he's just chilling on this rock. We're gonna leave him be. Beautiful frog. Alright, so this little fella sitting on my hand right now is the venomous rainforest scorpion. Now luckily for me, here in Australia, we don't have any species of really venomous scorpions. All of the venom is not too significant to humans. Now, of course, people can have allergic reactions to the venom, like some people have to bees or peanut butter. He still has those big claws on the front right there and a little tail which does inject venom. But I'm guessing when this guy's catching prey, which is normally little bugs, maybe even lizards when he gets a little bit bigger, that he would be using primarily his claws to grab a hold of them, crush them to death. But yeah, he's a pretty cool one. Normally when I find these scorpions, I put them on my face for whatever reason. So we're probably gonna do that again. Hopefully he doesn't sting me. Just so I can see better. There we go. I do some weird stuff when I'm out here by myself in the bush, eh? So what I found really cool about this time that I've come over here and camped on this island is we're finding different species. It's not just snakes that are over here. I remember a few months ago while I was out exploring in this remote creek system, I found a giant centipede. The thing was massive and I ended up actually picking it up. Wow. So I tell you what, having a centipede like this on your hand is so much scarier than walking next to a Komodo dragon. Now, I think these animals are so cool, but just knowing real quickly I could be in so much pain, he's just dropped off there, is impressive. They're really impressive animals and we're gonna let him go. Picking up that centipede was one of the scariest things I've ever done, just knowing how painful the sting is of that animal. And let's say you're handling a snake, you can kind of tell when that snake's gonna strike at you. If you've got a centipede or a scorpion on your nose, if this thing wants to sting me right now, there's nothing that I can do. All right, I'm gonna keep walking up this creek, probably just gonna leave this scorpion on my face for the time being until he wants to move on. And yeah, see if we can find some more cool animals. Let's go. Right, we've done it. This is the snake that we came out here to find. I'm absolutely shaken right now. This right here is my favorite species of snake here in Australia and one of the most venomous snakes in the world. Now I decided to go exploring along these rocky escarpments here on this island. And just as I was looking down, I spotted this little fella, the death adder. What this guy would be doing right now is waiting for a little lizard, a little mouse, anything that he's trying to prey on to come past him. And how he actually does that is he's got a little lure on his tail. I'll just move in so we can see it. And what he'll be doing is he'll be sitting on this cliff, using that little lure, wriggling it like that, 
and when a little gecko or a mouse or anything comes too close and mistakes that for a little worm, he'll strike out and inject it with a neurotoxic venom. They've got very big fangs as well, very camouflaged species. So me walking around here barefoot, I knew that these snakes were over here on this island, but it's so cool to see one in person. So he's just curled up next to this little rock right here. Now this is the second death adder that I've ever found by myself in the wild. And the crazy story about it was I had just done a massive road trip out into the outback filming videos out there by myself. And I was coming back around next to Steve Irwin's property. He's got a property about six hours out west. So I was going for a big drive along it one morning. And keep in mind, I had been out looking for these death adders for about two and a half years, going searching multiple times a week, hundreds of hours, hundreds of attempts and I'd found absolutely nothing. It was just one of those species that I could not find. And when I was out there, I thought I'd get out of the car and say a quick word to Steve. So I put my hands on the earth and said, thank you for inspiring me and inspiring so many people to do this kind of stuff and get outdoors and see these animals and experience all these things and inspire me to want to do this sort of filming. And I also said to Steve, help me find a cool animal today or whatever. Got up, walked about a hundred meters, found a death adder, which was pretty amazing after spending all that time looking for him. So that's why I love this species so much. And it's so cool to finally find one over here on this island. Now, the other reason why the death adder is so many people's favorite snakes here in Australia is because it's so different to all the other snakes that we have here. It has a different appearance. It looks like the vipers and the adders that are over in different countries. And although this guy is called a death adder, they're not actually in the viper family. They're elapids like all the other snakes. So these snakes right here are arguably the fastest striking snakes on earth. From the striking position out and back in again, they can get that away in 0.15 seconds. The blink of an eye, but actually the average person blinks in about 0.3 to 0.4 seconds. So this little snake right here can strike twice within that time. So the death adder was originally known as the deaf adder because when this species was first discovered over here in Australia, they were one of the only snakes that wouldn't move out of the way when they heard footsteps coming like a lot of the other species. And it's because they rely solely on their camouflage to hide from predators, but they also use it for hunting. So if I was bitten by this death adder out here, I'd be in real trouble because they have a really potent neurotoxic venom. It affects your ability to send electrical messages through your body. And eventually that leads to shutting down the muscles that control your heart and lungs. And yeah, you'll die. Oh, there we go. He's moving at the moment. Take a look at that, putting his little head up. What an awesome snake, man. And to find one here at this place on the Sunshine Coast, I'm pretty sure in the past 10 to 15 years, there's only been one that's been officially recorded. So yeah, we're gonna let this guy be, keep looking for some more snakes, but yeah, pretty cool. See you later, mate. Pretty crazy. I don't think anyone will truly understand the amount of time I spent looking for that snake right there. And to find it here in a place where it's only been reported a handful of times over the last 10 or 15 years, is really cool. Obviously other people have seen them, but yeah, they're not a easy snake to find by any means out here in this area. We found a heap of cool animals so far. What I think I'm gonna do right now is focus on getting food. Back where we caught that Australian bass in part one with my bare hands, we're gonna go back to that section of creek and try catch a catfish, maybe some perch. We'll try get another Australian bass, we'll see how we go. But yeah, what a cool day. All right, let's go. So I was just walking up this creek that surrounds the island and we've spotted a huge fish trapped in this little pool right here. Since the water levels are so low, you saw in the last episode, we were able to find that eel catfish and a big Australian bass all stuck in one pool. Just cruising around in the shallows just over there. It's a tilapia. It's an introduced species of fish. And sadly for me, it's illegal to eat them here in Australia. Now you can probably see him just shooting over there back into his little home. We'll go over there and try catch him in a minute.
Right there. He is sitting right there. There he goes. There we go. So take a look at that gorgeous fish right there. Absolutely amazing animals. I know that they're an introduced species, but they're just so crazy. Sadly, I do have to kill it. They compete with the native sports fish here in Australia because they carry babies in their mouth. So what can happen is let's say a hawk's flying over this creek, comes down, picks up this tilapia, flies it to a different creek system and those babies drop out on the way. That's how they can get introduced into different systems and it's happened like that before, even in the local town that I live in. I can almost guarantee in this system right here, 10 years ago there wouldn't have been these tilapia but they spread like wildfire and I've eaten them before in places like Borneo and Bali and they taste so good. So if you were actually in a survival situation, you could eat this fish right here. But sadly I would get big fines if I did this on camera so. Might have to try find something else for dinner. Now, even though they are an introduced species, look at the colors on this fish. They're really good looking fish. If they were a native, everyone would love them. But yeah, we're not gonna eat this fish on camera. Uh, don't wanna get fined or anything, so we'll go dig a hole and bury it. All right, the storm's here. I'm just running up this creek at the moment, looking for a place that I can take shelter and wait for it to pass over. It's really hot and humid at the moment. Don't want to get wet tonight, so I'm not sleeping in wet clothes, but I reckon this is going to bring some snakes out. After this storm dies down a bit into the later hours of the day, we'll go out and see what we can find, but I'm going to try to find a little cave to chill out for the time being. Night number two, out here on this island. And again, such a cool adventure. I love when everything actually goes according to plan because there's a lot of times that I'm out here by myself in the bush and I don't find the animals that I'm looking for. I'll come out here for a three day survival video and I'll find nothing. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get my torch, start walking around for a bit, see what animals I can find, cruising around this creek system over here on this island. Then we're gonna come back here, go to sleep, and go on another mission tomorrow morning. So this, just down here, is the reason why there isn't a really healthy population of these death adders over here on this island. But yeah, that right there is a poisonous species of toad that when these snakes eat, They'll actually die. All right, we found one. Take a look at this snake sitting just down here. Look at the patterns on it. Now we found this one over here on the island a few times before, but that is known as a bandy bandy. We'll get you a closer look at him. Now one thing that I love about these bandy bandies is probably over the years, I've found hundreds of these snakes, but every time I find one, it's just as cool. They're such nice snakes rarely ever bite, rarely ever try to bite. And you can see what he's doing right now. We'll get a close up shot of him. He's actually digging back down into the earth, which is where they live. And why it's so special that we saw him because that's where they spend 90% of their time, underground. They come out on nights after rain, hunting for other species like blind snakes, which is primarily what they feed on. All right, we just got back to camp. Such a cool day of exploring. Found a bandy bandy as well tonight. I'm really stoked about that. I'm gonna go to sleep, wake up early tomorrow morning, keep exploring around this island. Heaps of cool videos coming soon. Thank you so much for watching part two of my adventure here on Snake Island. See you guys in the morning.